Hi guys, welcome back to another Scout the Defender YouTube video. Now in my last video, you'll have seen me fighting to fix the windscreen wipers. The gears had all seized up, so I ended up taking the dash out to replace the gearing system and the windscreen wipers are now working back as they should. In that video, I mentioned that whilst the dash is out, I'm gonna take the opportunity to do a couple of upgrades. So let's get right into it and have a look at the parts that I've ordered that I can't wait to fit whilst the dash is out. So it's always a really exciting day when you get a package from the guys at Optimil. I've got a few of their other bits already fitted to the car, like the steering removable boss and also the cover. So I'm excited to get a new bit of their kit on the car. As some of you have already guessed, I've ordered the Optimil washer jet. As you know from standard, the washer jet is so poor on the standard defenders. So this is a much needed upgrade to get much more coverage when you're cleaning the windscreen. So let's have a little look inside the box. I've already had a little look. I couldn't wait till I filmed the video. We've got instruction guide, what's in the kit. So we have in here, the uprated pump. So this will make sure that much more water and screen wash is pumped to the new nozzle, which is obviously much more powerful and give much more coverage. So this pump will ensure that you're getting enough water to the windscreen. So we're gonna fit that. We've also got an uprated pipe as well. This is much wider than the standard. So again, more water to the windscreen, much better clearance. We've got the electronics, so this has got a new relay. This will connect to the old motor and to the new motor or to the new pump to ensure that we're powering that and that will run that through the dash uh, and then into uh, the power. And then finally, we've got the nozzle itself. This is significantly larger than the standard nozzle, so it will give much more spray and coverage to the car. And you'll see that rather than the standard nozzle just having two jets, this has four or five jets. So it covers much more of the windscreen, much more effective in cleaning that windscreen. So really excited to fit this. So with that, it's time to get cracking. I'll walk you through uh, the install. Then I'll also be able to show you a comparison the before and after of the washer jet. So let's get right into it. So obviously I have the luxury of having the dash already removed because I was fixing the wipers. So I definitely recommend if you're having to go back towards the dash to definitely consider doing this upgrade whilst you've got the dash out. But I just want to caveat that you can still do this um, upgrade without necessarily having to remove all of the dash. You can instead on a Puma remove the fascia and you'll be able to get to the back of the washer jet itself. So that's just a caveat that you can do it. It's probably a bit more fiddly. So I'd definitely consider, if you're having to take the dash out anyway, to consider doing this job at the same time. So the first thing we need to do is access the old washer pump. And to do that, you have to go in through behind the light. So I've removed my light surrounds um, and I'm now gonna be able to remove the headlight or disconnect that to get that out of the way. And then we'll be able to get access to the pump that's behind this light. So now we've got all the headlight out of the way, we've now got access to the inner wing and hopefully if I shine my torch in, you can see the pump. So the pump on the left is our front pump, which we're gonna be changing. The one on the right is for the rear. The red clip connects that to the battery. So we're gonna be changing all of that out. So we now need to remove the pump. So unclip the red clip and then just pull the pump out. I've also got a bucket here ready to catch all of the extra screen wash. Uh, so we'll now remove that. So you can see the old pump. Uh, we've removed that now, and you can see up there into the tank, we move this cable out of the way. That is where we're going to be fitting uh, the new grommet that's in the kit. We're gonna push that in ready to receive the new pump. Uh, all of the water, well, it mainly missed the bucket, but there's a little bit of screen wash in the bucket. So we'll now push the grommet in, and then we can build up the new pump. This is the grommet that we need to push into the tank. If you get a bit of washing up liquid around the grommet, it makes sure that it slips in a little bit easier into the tank. Hey guys, this is a quick interruption to ask that if you enjoy these videos, be sure to subscribe. Over 80% of people that watch the videos frequently don't subscribe to the channel and it really helps the channel out. So be sure to subscribe to be notified when the next videos drop and it supports the channel in turn and we can do much more exciting modifications, road trips and really grow the channel. So be sure to subscribe and uh, yeah, let's get back to the video see now that new grommet is pushed into the tank you can also make the decision here whether you want to keep the old pump inside whether you want to just tuck it out the way or whether you want to disconnect it I'm gonna just move it out the way so 
uh, it's all going to be running the optimal gear so I'm going to now just pull the pump out of the tube. Right so it's now time to assemble the new pump. For reference you see how much bigger this new pump is so this is the new pump supplied in the kit and this is the old one so they're considerably bigger so it'll pump more water uh, across the screen. So to build this up we need to push this, mo this nozzle onto the jet and again we need to probably lubricate that so it'll go on nice and easily and then we can mount up then the adapter so this is what's going to help this pump fit into the existing holding where the old pump was sat obviously this pump's a lot bigger this is much slimmer so it will slip into the holder and then it will then effectively mount and hold the pump in place so we're now going to build that up So there we have the new pump all rigged up, we've got the connection that's going to go into the tank and then we've got uh, the effectively the dummy pump that's going to slot into where the old pump was because obviously this new pump's a lot larger. Now we need to connect to the water hose, so the larger end of the water hose is going to connect to this end and then we're going to use a Jubilee clip to secure that and once that's done we're ready to install it. So in there you can now see the new pumps in place that red connector is what we're going to connect to the new electrics so this is the fly lead connection that big plug is going to go on top of the pump and then that black smaller connection is what's going to connect to the red clip in there so we'll connect that up now So you now can see we've got everything connected up. We've got the electrics, hopefully, you can see up there connected to the pump. The hose now runs down and then through the inner wing. And then the electrics come back up here where I've mounted them to the inner wing bracket. There's a nut normally there, so I've just used that to mount the relay and the earth behind it. The wires then come up and we've got the water wire, so the water tube and the electrics wire, and they're now gonna run down the inner wing to this grommet back here. And we're gonna cut a hole in this grommet to be able to feed the wires through the bulkhead and we'll be able to grab them on the other side. So now I've got the grommet cut, you can see the water pipes going through the bulkhead. And if I come round, this is perhaps why it's easy with the dash out. I can now see that the water tubes come through. So we're now running that through the dash and we can run that up towards where we're going to fit the new nozzle. So uh, one thing I like to do when I'm running wires through into the seat box, I've got this bright yellow tube, which is effectively just off the top of a WD-40 can. I push that through the seat box from the inside out. So I've got a good idea of where I need to get the cable to, because otherwise it's a bit tricky and dark, especially if you're right under the car. So now I've got that as reference, I can run the wire down the main loom and bring it over, make sure it's not getting in contact with anything, and then use that as a reference to poke it through the hole through the seat box. So now I'm underneath uh, the car, underneath the engine. You can see hopefully that top of the red wire just there, that's the cable that we're going to pull down. So it's going to run down the inside. All this other conduit is for main looms going into the seat box. So we're going to feed that down and then we can go and find where that yellow pipe is, where we're going to push it back through. Here on the other side now, we've got the red cable coming through that we've just pushed from the chassis. So we can now pull that through and we can go and get the rest of the connectors that are going to connect to the main power. Now the wire's coming through the seat box, it's connected to the fuse that you get in the kit and connected to live. I apologise for the spaghetti. One job is to tidy all of this wiring up. Now that's connected, we can uh, return to connecting the hose to the washer jet. The next task is to remove the old washer jet and fit the new one. Again, got the dash off for this. You can see this black hose is the old existing uh, washer jet uh, pipe. And behind that, that plugs into a nut that's connecting the washer jet to the body of the car. We need to remove that usually it's helpful to have long nose pliers to get to that and once we've disconnected that we can run the new jet through the body of the car so i can remove now the old washer jet 
go that way. So now that's removed, we've got the new jet here. We've got a gasket to slide on. And then this nut we can take onto the inside of the cab and connect it and tighten it up from the inside. So the new wash jet is connected there. We can now connect up the hose, the hose that we've pulled through the bulkhead just down here. We can feed that along into the connecting uh, pipes that are supplied in the kit. And then that is basically the install done. So this is the connector that will now attach to the hose there. So the long end will attach to the hose end and then the bit with the right angle will connect, connect to the end of the washer jet. And there you can see that's the pipe connected. Just need to do a bit of tidying of the, the cables and of the pipes. Right, so that's everything connected up. It's now for the moment of truth. We've got the electrics running to the new pump and through to the battery. We've got the tube or the enhanced pipe connected to the new washer jet. So it's all just a case now. Turning the ignition, giving it a test and seeing how it compares to the standard washer jet, which I think is going to be a significant improvement. So let's go and test it out. So there you have it guys, you can see the significant improvement to that optimal jet, the genuine one with the two weak streams, whereas that with the five nozzles covering much more of the screen and much more uh, cleaning power. Really happy with that upgrade and I'll leave a link down below where you can grab one too. If you've enjoyed this video, please drop it a like, leave a comment down below what I should be modifying next and uh, also make sure to subscribe for plenty more videos to come and I'll see you in the next one.